How many, how many solutions do we need? Three. Should be fine. Three. How'd you know that? The, higher power is three. the highest degree of three tells me how many solutions it is. Guess what? That's the fundamental mm -hmm. theorem of algebra. That's it. Okay? I don't know why it needs a long name, but it does. There it is. Now, those three solutions could be real numbers that you could visibly see on the graph, or they could be imaginary numbers. All right? So what we're going to do is work to find those numbers using all the methods and skills that we've uh, uh, gotten through the years. All right? So if I look at this first equation, it's just to the power of 3. Is there something I can factor out? I can take an x out, right? Okay. So if I take an x out, I get x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now if I look at it, will this factor? Yes. In what way will it factor? Negative 5 and a positive 1. Yep. Okay. And then from here, this is all we've been doing, right? x will equal 0. This will give me x equals a positive 5, and this gives me x equals negative 1. So according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, when I look at this graph, it's going to hit at 0, 1, and a 5, right? <coughs> this is just a bonus. Now, what, are, what is the end behavior going to do here? Yeah? Negative 1. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is negative 1. So negative 1. And five. Thank you. All right. End behavior is something that was on your quiz yesterday, right? So based on the x cubed here, what is the end behavior going to do? What's going to happen as you look left? As x is getting smaller, where are your y values? They're going down, right? And as I look right, what are the y values doing? Increasing because it's positive and it's odd, right? That was on your quiz. So that tells me you don't have to do this part every time. But I know that the ends are going to go opposite directions. And then yesterday on your quiz, I asked you about multiplicity. Well, this has a multiplicity of a single, because it's x to the first. This factor only appears once, so it's a single. This factor only appears once, so it's a single. All that tells me is that the line is just going to go through the x values I found like regular. Nothing special. Now, do I have to graph that? No. I'm just trying to tie all the pieces together. Your job is to solve. Okay? So this is one way we can solve. So here's our solutions. Today, your solutions are all going to be a real, real number, so you should not run, run into anything with imaginaries. All right? <coughs> Over here, let's look at this one. What can we do with that? Let's we'll start by taking an x out. That gives me x to the third minus 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. It's still x cubed, so it's not something I can take and factor. Can't use quadratic formula. Can't use all that stuff, right? Do what? You can split it into two. You could. You could do some grouping here. What can I take out of those two terms? X squared. Okay. So I'm going to put big old brackets here. So x squared would give me x minus 2, right? What can I take out of these two pieces? A 9. A 9. And that would give me x minus 2, wouldn't it? So we've reduced it even further. So I have x times. Now notice the x minus 2 is in common. So I can take that out. If I take out the x minus 2's, I now have x squared plus 9, don't I? Do what? Why are you confused? Where did I lose you? This? We just grouped them together. Looked at these two. What can we take out of both of them? We can take an x squared out. That left me with an x and a negative 2. This one? It's right here. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. I grouped them here and here, went here. Oh, yeah, never mind. See it? 
and the x squared, x minus 2s are the same, so I can just take them out. It's like factoring, factoring, double factoring, okay? From here, I can find my other solutions by doing what we've been doing, okay? So let's solve it. This means that there's an x of 0. This means there's an x of what? <coughs> Positive 2, right? This one needs a little more work. Move my 9 over, right? Square root it. So this one does have an imaginary root, doesn't it? Yeah, and that comes out as an I. So it would be a 3I, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't think there was, but I guess there is. <laughs> I guess there is. So maybe we do end up with some imaginaries on this one. Now, so did I come up with four solutions? Because the theorem says I should have four solutions, shouldn't I? Do I have four? Yes. I have two imaginaries. I have a positive and a negative. Now, just for fun, I want to show you. If I graph this guy, x to the fourth minus 2x cubed. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Plus 9x squared minus 18x. All right, took a minute. But if we graph that, Look at that. We can see where it's crossing the x-axis. It's crossing at 0, right? Mm -hmm. We knew that was going to happen. And it's crossing at positive 2. But these we cannot see. Those are imaginary. You're not going to see them on the graph. So when you're using fundamental theorem of algebra, you can't rely on, really anytime you're solving, you can't completely rely on the calculator to tell you all your roots, right? Because some of them are imaginary. Especially if you're looking at the, at the graph and you're like, wait, there's only two, but there has to be four. That means somewhere there's some imaginaries happening. Okay? So, do you feel like it's all that new information? Does, it shouldn't feel all that new because it's really kind of the same thing. We're just calling it a different name. Okay? So, um, what's coming up? Well, in the next lesson, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to kind of work it backwards from the imaginary roots. Okay? Woohoo, good times. All right?